welcome back to Expedition Jack. Today we're taking a look at this. This is the Fellmark Wrecked Trekking Axe, suitable for all your journeys, bushcraft, camping and wild camping. And it's mainly because it's of its small stature, however it delivers the job. It actually gets the job done. <coughs> Comparing to some other brands, the Mora 500 gram one has a fantastic blade, however, um, it just does not deliver the job because it's so short in stature and it just does not work, I found. So last year I was fortunate enough to be sent this by Rano from Fellmark right before my trip to Sweden. So I could actually experience and use it on a proper two week hiking trip and we'll see how we got on. And these are my experiences with this axe. Uh, the pros and cons, the design and why this is my go-to axe right now, other than the Halter Fours or the Mora. So let's just jump on into it. So the main two points you're interested in is how long is it and how much does it weigh? So the handle length is actually 15.4 inches long and it weighs just under one kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds for you American folk. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't the most lightweight axe for trekking as that is definitely the Mora axe. Look, but you see the difference in stature. Uh, this is actually 500 grams and that's why I got this, which is half a kilo. This is a full kilo and the blade on this is amazing, but it just does not do the job for me. It just, it's, it's really bad. Basically, it just does not cut what I want it to cut. However, in my time in Sweden, I chopped all sorts of wood and in Sweden, it's notoriously sort of pine wood and spruce and um, very, very hard woods in Sweden. And that's what I was coming up against. So as you can see in this footage, I actually set myself up a proper chopping block and uh, went to town on some of these logs. And I was amazed at how clean and cut this ax goes through these pieces of wood. All that's established is, is that that actually does its job as an ax for the weight. Now let's look more in detail about this. As it comes, it's actually a Damascus steel head, if you can see from the detailing on the head, and a rosewood handle. And it actually comes with a, a leather sheath. This is a cowhide leather sheath, but the design of this is actually meant to hang on your belt. So it's all uh, um, included in that thing, in the build, so you can just attach it straight to your belt. However, this is a con for me because I actually found out that it, I didn't get on well with this. So what I would much prefer to do is actually use my leather axe loop that I've already got. I know it's not brown, it doesn't match, but that's fine as long as it's functional and practical. Uh, and this just fits straight in there and I can just grab it and get it out. Now you might be wondering like, how do I use it without the sheath because this is all attached sort of thing. Well. The first thing I did was mod it. I actually cut this bit off. So this is actually meant to slip on your, your belt and then it will dangle and it will clip in here. It is a genius thought, but it wasn't fully executed. Uh, the main reason for doing this, one is that I've just said that I like the easy access of it, but also when it hangs, when it hang, it didn't hang right and it sort of was falling away from you flapping about. Now a simple way to get around this is just put a back on it to, to sort of hold in here, but that's for say a Mark II, but not right now. Anyway, well, let's get rid of that. So as you can see, I like to just put it in that and then let it dangle. This is a bit big for this because I actually bought this for my Hortifors axe, but it won't go anywhere. It will just jam in there and stay on my side and it doesn't fall away from me or anything. So that works just nice for me. Now in other news, this is a rosewood handle, like I said, and then this is the mask. So I like to keep this mask on. And that still works perfectly. But as you can see, this is a beautiful Damascus steel alloy with uh, a twisted design. Very strong, very sturdy, very, very nice. The cons of having Damascus steel is that it's very, very prone to rust. So every time I go out and use this, it will rust uh, if I put it in storage or go back because it'll have like tree juices, water, whatever, any sort of moisture you can think of, this will rust straight away. 
and it doesn't need much at all to do that. So one way to combat the rust is that let it go rusty, it's fine, it's fine, it goes rusty. Get yourself some steel wool, uh, ultra fine steel wool, which is zero, 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 four zeros. And uh, you just rub that, rub that down, that removes all the rust for you. There's no chemicals needed or whatever. And then you just um, treat it with any oil you have around the house. I heard Ray Mears and them, they say gun oil for metals and knives and stuff. I don't really come by gun oil that much, I don't know about you. We don't really have gun oil in the UK. Not that I know of anyway. Um, but I just use any old oil out the kitchen, so like vegetable oil I think I used. Um, or olive oil. Olive oil is probably a bit more purer, I'm not sure. But it does the job. It actually seals it and it doesn't rust after that. It's good. I didn't clean up the best last time because I was a bit lazy to be honest. And uh, yeah, it does the job. It does does the job. It comes straight out of the box really, really sharp. I have used it a lot, so it is nice and blunt now. I've got to just uh, polish that up and make that workable again. But the style of the head mix, it's so good. It flares out so far for most logs and wood. You can go up quite some size of uh, what pieces of wood you're cutting. It's not just a small axe for small bits of wood. You can actually do some big logs if you use like Paul Curtis techniques and everything. And the way this is designed is very ingenious. So it won't slip out because this is thicker down here. It goes up to a broader spectrum where all the weight falls in the head, which is perfect for an ax. Like I was saying, like this doesn't cut very well. It's because somehow it's not well sort of balanced in a way. It it's wants to like, it wants to go too far over and you always just use that bit of it. Where this is, this is just feels more balanced in the weight. Uh, the way it's built. So they got the design right that way. What they didn't get right in this is um, they actually lacquered. This is varnished with lacquer, <laughs> which you shouldn't really, really do. They've put it on heavy. Uh, it will preserve the wood beautifully. But the idea of using oils and everything is to prevent blisters from using it because when you sweat with varnish or lacquer or using this, it sticks like one oak, you like really good grip on it, but it will create blisters over time from your sweat because it has nowhere to go. So if you're using this for an extended period of time, there may be blisters. However, um, the grip of it is very sticky and tacky. It has a very good resistance on the grip, which is amazing for the lacquer. So I think that's why they lacquered it. And then the way they've put the head on, perfect, seamless sort of thing. But from an extended use, like I've used this actually a lot, a lot. It has a tiny bit of play now. Well, the slightest vibration, but this still functions amazingly well. Then also when this came out of the box, this was so sharp, it was unbelievable that you can use it straight away. Very, very fine edge on that, very nice. Um, however, also these <laughs> were very harsh edges. All of these were very, very harsh edges. Which effectively means that I was worried when I was trekking with this because I couldn't wear it on my belt all the time, I had to put it in the uh, my backpack. It would rub through when I'm hiking. So I actually wrapped it. This was still attached at the time when I went to Sweden, but this would actually wrap around there. I wrapped it around so it wouldn't, wouldn't rub on my bag. But then obviously I want to get rid of this and then that's where the problem came about. So I actually just had to sand down all these edges so they're nice and smooth now because they were very, very right angle sharp, those edges. And I must say it is good for a company to include a belt sheath like that. However, it just doesn't work for me. It will work for a lot of other people, but just not for me. You got the beautiful little logo here and the Damascus steel is beautiful, really beautiful. And there's no two axes the same because of this. It's like a fingerprint and it does cut wood phenomenally well, very, very well. Um, I would say this cuts wood just as good as my Hortifors axe, and that's a, a big, a 
big axe for like nearly half the weight. It's pretty as well. It's a bonus that it's pretty and it's functional. I have read a few other reviews of uh, other people getting this axe and they do say that there is a bit of a, a hole in the quality control. So you see like the one I got, there's a chip. There's a chip here in the Damascus steel. I don't know if that Damascus steel is prone to that, but it just, it looks a bit unsightly. It doesn't affect the performance or functionality of it. So that's all that is. And also on the leather work, it was too tight around here. So I had to modify it so it would actually, so it would actually secure properly. So if you are thinking of getting one of these, just make sure you quality check it when you get it and uh, you're good to go sort of thing. So I hope this review has helped you in some way. And if you're in the market for a trekking axe, I would highly suggest you looking at Fellmark as their beautiful design. As long as you can put up the cons and put it right. I'm not comparing this to any of the Grand Falls Brooks axes as I've never used them before. I've heard that they are a superior axe in most ways. Um, however, I can't comment as I've never used them. If you own one, Give your opinion down below in the comment section. We would love to hear it. I am genuinely interested in hearing what you have to say about this axe and the axes you've used in the past. It's all good sharing knowledge about products and which is good for different scenarios. So this as a trekking axe to hike with for your camps to go bushcrafting and wild camping, especially in my experience taking this across Sweden, the high coast with me, it's a thumbs up from me. It did the job. It wasn't too much extra weight to carry. And it's a solid bit of gear. The, the edge, I didn't have to sharpen up the edge. It was fantastic. And it just works, it just works for me. So I hope this video has helped you in some way. And if you're interested in seeing me use this actually in the Sweden series, that is actually re being released right now, every Sunday weekly. Uh, on Expedition Jack. Uh, so thanks for watching and stay tuned to join the expedition.